Senator from Georgia. Mr. President, I'd like to ask you to be recognized for up to five minutes in morning business and to be followed by Senator Stabenow from Michigan. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I rise for two purposes, Mr. President. First of all, there is a huge argument in America with regard to health care, and we all know one of the main contributing factors to the health difficulties of all Americans is the subject of obesity. There are many opinions in both ways on how you address it, but the most comprehensive way to address it is to be intellectually honest in approaching the problem. Mutar Kent, the president of the Coca-Cola Company, was published in the Wall Street Journal on the 8th of October this month, a brilliant article on obesity, weight, sugar content, and soft drinks. I commend it to the United States Senate for their study, and I ask unanimous consent that it be appear in the record. So ordered. Further, Mr. President, I'd like to ask unanimous consent that the remainder of my remarks appear separately in the record. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. President, on Sunday of this past week, an event of journalistic magnitude in the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia took place. A man by the name of Furman Bisher published his last sports column in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. He typed that column on the same manual royal typewriter upon which he typed his first column 59 years ago. Furman Bisher is a distinguished employee of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, a distinguished resident of our city and our state. And unlike many in their profession, he had profound positive effects on his city and his state and on sports. Furman Bisher started writing in Atlanta, Georgia, when Atlanta's only professional sports team were the Atlanta Crackers, a double-A team playing in a small bandbox stadium, Ponstelian Park. In the 1960s, as his career emerged, and he, along with Jesse Outler, were the principal writers of sports in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, he began to be published in other magazines, magazines like Sports Magazine, magazine like The Sporting News. And he developed respect around the United States as a gifted, talented, and honest sports writer. Mr. President, had it not been for Furman Bisher, the Atlanta Braves would probably not be in Atlanta, Georgia. Because when Mills B. Lane and Mayor Abin Allen risk what then was a huge amount of money, $18 million, to build a major league sports stadium without a sports team. It wasn't until Furman Bisher went and talked to the Bartholomew family, who were getting ready to move the Milwaukee Braves from Milwaukee, and convinced them to bring Major League Baseball for the first time ever to the South. The same was true a few years later, when Rankin Smith of Atlanta petitioned to buy the first NFL franchise to exist in the South. And that $7.5 million purchase happened for a lot of reasons, but probably the most important of which was Furman Bisher. But what's so great about Furman is he could make sports come alive from cricket to football, from boxing to golf. His writing on boxing is historic, and his following of Atlanta native Evander Holyfield helped elevate Evander to where he became the heavyweight champion of the world. But probably nothing more important than the years of coverage of the greatest golf tournament on the face of this earth, the Masters. None other than Bobby Jones, none other than Jack Nicklaus, none other than Arnold Palmer, none, either, none other than Tiger Woods acknowledged that the gifted writing of Furman Bisher about that treasured tournament helped to elevate it to where it is today, the preeminent event in golf around the world. A lot of people contribute a lot to their profession. We in Georgia are proud of so many who've given so much to our state. But today I want to pay tribute to a man who for 59 dedicated years covered sports in Georgia and made it possible for many, many great things to happen. A man who was gifted, a man who was talented, and a man who even today shares his wisdom and his commitment to sports as he approaches his 91st birthday. And on a personal note, as a young boy and a sports fan in the late 1940s and 50s, I used to rush to the mailbox to get our Atlanta Journal and our Atlanta Constitution. And I didn't go to the funny papers. I didn't go to the comics. I didn't go to the crossword puzzle. I went to Furman Bisher. Furman Bisher was a great writer and to me an inspiration for sports in Atlanta, Georgia. And I wish he and his family the very best in their retirement and yield back the balance of my time.